Hey, all my brothers and sisters right now, I just want to say thank you for clicking on this video. I'm Colton from Seeking Wisdom Ministries, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. I'm almost in a uh, really surreal moment of deep revelation last night, and right now I'm just still in almost that realm of disbelief and shock. Deception is so strong in this world and it hurts my heart and I'm grieved. But I received a dream from the Lord last night and I would love to share it with you if you have time to listen because this is very serious. This is gonna be raw truth, unadulterated, straight from the Lord. My heart is grieved beyond understanding in this moment because I dream a lot. I'm a dreamer. God gives me a lot of dreams and sometimes I just dream because God will show me something that's about to happen and that's happened and there's many testimonies of that. But the dream that I had last night really shook me. You know, it wasn't that it was horrific or gory. It wasn't that it was just so glorious or spontaneous and amazing. It was to the point where it just, it was just a little bit that shook me. It was just the staleness and the disbelief and the utter hurt that grabbed me. Last night, the dream, I was in this uh, shopping center and I was going up to people and almost in a sense of like, in the moment when I was shopping, the Lord spoke to me in the dream and was like, my son, look around you. Look at all of these people who have no idea where they're going to end up. Look at all these people who are living and doing business as usual and have no clue where they will spend their eternity. And I'm just looking around in my heart. First, I start to almost tear up like, Father, these people are just like blind. They don't understand. They're deceived. They think that they're right standing with you. And many of these people I'm looking at, you know, they have the crosses. They, 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 they look and they, they talk like they believe in Jesus. They, they think that they're in right standing with God. They think that they are righteous before the Lamb of God. But they have no idea what's coming. They have no clue. So in the dream, I was walking up to them and I'm just like, Wake up! Like I'm literally shaking them. Wake up! Do you not understand that Jesus is coming? That hell is real. That hell is eternal. That hell is pure torment and flames. And it's not made for you. You don't have to go. Jesus died for you. So you don't have to. But their reaction was what stirred my soul and what broke my heart. There was a numbness. There was a staleness. There was a, a blank poker face of the pure I don't care or like whatever. They're desensitized. They're desensitized with the growing up of always hearing about hell, but never understanding the cure or the reality of what it means to really be set free from sin, to be set free and set apart, a saint of God pulled apart out of this world. They don't understand it. And in this dream, I was just weeping. I was just weeping, looking at everybody in the store like, God, what is happening? Why? Why don't they wake up? Why don't they see what your word says? And why don't they obey the words of your holy book, of your holy word? This is the word of God. But we have so many people who think that they're going to heaven. But in, they're going to have a rude awakening when they meet God face to face. And him say, depart from me. I never knew you, worker of iniquity. I never knew you. I woke up this morning and it was a battle because I was just so hurt and I was just sitting here in my bed looking around in deep thought. Like God, I know you're coming soon. You've shown me the signs. You've given me visions and dreams, but all that doesn't matter because if people don't want to listen or don't want to seek the truth, it's, it's just, what's the point? And I feel like the Lord's showing me right now, it doesn't matter. Speak the words of truth. 
Speak my word, is what he's telling me. Speak my word. Tell people of the sudden judgment that is coming, the sudden destruction that is coming. Tell my people that if they don't turn from their wicked ways, they will perish. Tell my people that if they continue to live and worship a lie, that I will give them over to their reprobate mind to do the things that they want to do. See, this is the raw truth that not a lot of people want to hear, but I know... I know I have to. It's a burning fire in me to tell the people, to warn the people in the church. To warn the people who think that they're saved, who think that they're doing the will of God, but they don't know Him. They worship God with their lips, but their hearts are far from Him. They want to accept and say a prayer and say, Jesus, come into my heart. But they deny Him by the way that they live. They're denying Him. They're denying the power thereof to set them free. They're denying the blood of Jesus. They're denying that the blood of Jesus is powerful to live for Him. To live holy. To live on fire. To live for the glory of God. Why? I don't understand. I don't understand and I'm grieved and I'm going to shout at the top of my lungs that God has given me and breathe his word in and out daily because I need to. It's a battle for my soul. It's a battle between flesh and spirit. It is a battle. But what will I submit to determines what the outcome will be. Do I submit myself to the flesh? to my flesh and what I want and my desires and what I crave that is evil or do I submit to God and do I submit to righteousness the word of Jesus the blood of the lamb I'm saved by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony but if you can but if you just take out the testimony and say I'm just saved by the blood of the lamb and not the word of my testimony that means that you have not fully surrendered and submitted and trusted the blood of God because the blood of God is powerful. The blood of Jesus is powerful. The blood of God is enough to set you free, to walk in freedom and to live for God. But we have so many pastors and preachers and people who have a lot of head knowledge about the word of God, but they don't have the spirit. They don't have the spirit of God and they don't know him and they're going to hell. And they're dragging many people in their congregation to hell. It says in the last of days, men will crept in unawares, deceiving many and them themselves being deceived. It's not like they wake up and think, who am I going to deceive? Their hearts are hard. Their hearts are wax cold. They don't want to be set free because they did, they did not receive a love for the truth that they might be saved. And for that, I'm going to read in Romans Ver 1 18 and Romans 2 and I want everybody to know that I say this because I know that Jesus is real not because I just think or because I'm it's just something to do guys I'm, I'm pleading with someone right now you need to repent and turn to Jesus and ask him to clean you and to help you and to heal you you could never do it on your own we could never boast it's not of us. It's not of works. It's not of this. It's of submitting to the will of God. It's to surrender and say, God, I'm a sinner. I'm in need of you. Thank you. And now I'm a saint and I believe and I trust in the blood of Jesus to cleanse me from all sin and all, right, all unrighteousness and to help me, empower me to live for you. I'm speaking to somebody right now who needs to hear this. Time is up. Jesus is coming. We are about to enter into martial law. The world is setting up itself for the system of the beast, the mark of the beast. Do not take the mark of the beast because there's going to be many people even watching this video right now who think that they're right with God, but they're going to find themselves left behind. They're going to find themselves left behind and in a world where they just could never even conceive or understand or imagine what the destruction is going to be and how the Antichrist is going to come. See, Jesus is coming. The bride of Christ is going to be raptured. The people who are ready, who are prepared for the glory and the bridegroom. But if you're not walking in intimacy, in an intimacy, in an intimate relationship with the Lord Jesus, then you will be left behind. It says, pray that you're counted worthy to escape. See, guys, I'm tired of people saying, it's not of works, it's not of that. Yeah, you're right, it's not. There's nothing I could boast of. I boast in Jesus Christ alone. Okay, I trust in the blood of Jesus alone for the atonement of my sin. But what does that look like when someone truly trusts in the blood of Jesus? What does that look like when someone truly believes in the words of God? It shows by the fruit that they live. You will know your sisters and brothers by their fruit. Let's look in this. Ready? 
God's wrath on unrighteousness. Please watch this video. Watch the rest. This is the word of God. Don't dispute the word of God. Listen. Say, God, help me that I may comprehend the scriptures. Ready? Verse 18, Romans 1. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. Just that verse shares with us right there that the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. You want an answer? You want an answer why why God made hell and why God, you know, you know, has wrath against sin? Is because look at the world. Look at the wickedness. It's revealed from heaven by the way that they're living in unrighteousness. Because they may be known. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them. It's made real. For God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. They're without excuse. Listen, right now, if you're watching this video, you are without an excuse. There's no excuse of, but I didn't know, or but I thought that my pastor, but this or that and the other. Listen. You need to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. God loves you. God is wanting and desiring a relationship with you. But he made a way. And if you try to get in any other way to the kingdom of God, but through the doorway of Jesus Christ, through the blood of the Lamb, and through what God has made, Acts 2.38, through the keys of the kingdom of God, be baptized in Jesus' name, repent, be baptized in Jesus' name, and then be filled and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. If you try to go in any other way, you're like a thief. Because all day they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God, nor were they thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. So you see, they knew God, but they didn't want to worship God as God. They wanted to have their own teddy bear God that they can snuggle up next to and sin all day and say, God died for my sins. See, God was smart in the way that He made His Word, in the way that He ordained His Word, in the way that, that, that supernaturally, for those who have eyes and ears to hear and see... Only those who would truly surrender and love God for who he is truly. Those are the only people who will be saved. <sighs> Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like a corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to the uncleanness and the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever and amen. There's going to be many people who think that the Antichrist, who is the spirit of the devil, Satan, is in that man. It's going to be a man. And they're going to worship him, the creature, rather than the creator because they were blinded, because they loved unrighteousness, because they loved to be their own God. God will give you over to that reprobate mind. If you want to serve and be your own God, go ahead. God's not going to force you. But I'm warning you right now, repent. He loves you. He will give you a new heart if you're just willing. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. For even their women exchanged the natural use uh, for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in lust for one another. Men with committing what is shameful and receiving themselves the penalty of the error which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over their reprobate mind to do the things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil mindness. They are whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice, practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but they approve of those who practice them. There are many people who think that they're right with God, yet they're on their way to hell. The broad path, guys. Why do we not think that it's the broad and many people are going to go to the path of destruction when the word of God says that there is? It hurts my heart and I'm grieved by the numbness of America, by the numbness of this Gentile nation who has turned their life away from God, thinking that they're serving God, but they don't know Jesus. They don't know him because they disobey his word. If you love me, you will obey me. If you don't love God, don't obey his word. It's clearly shown. Faith without works is dead. I'm not putting my faith in my work. I'm putting my faith in the blood of Jesus. And I know that works come from that. 
See, people are so deceived by, oh, it's not of work. See, I, I grew up, I, I'm think, I was non-denominational, and I'm now, I'm just a child of God. But I want to say to you right now today, I grew up once saved, always saved. I grew up, say a prayer and you're good. Listen, are we trusting in a prayer more than having a, a relationship daily walking in the spirit with God? That's works. I said a prayer. All I got to do is that. Listen, dude, if you love Jesus, obey his word, because that is the truth that is going to set us free. If you love him, ask him to give you a new heart. He loves you. He's not willing or wanting anybody to go to hell, but he's never going to force you to come into his truth, to come into his arms, to come into his sheepfold. He's never going to force you. God's righteous judgment, Romans 2. Therefore, you are inexcusable, O oh man, whoever you are, whoever you are who judge, for in ever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. So see, a lot of people like to throw up, don't judge me, don't judge me. They don't even understand what that word means, okay? In this context, the word judge is to condemn. Don't condemn others. That's not your job. Don't ever condemn. I will never condemn, say, this person's going to hell or this person's going to heaven. But I will say, if you're without Christ, you are going to hell. But if you're in Christ and you profess that, I'm never going to condemn you because I don't know. But I do know my brothers and sisters by their fruit. And God says, I, I will give you discernment to be able to understand who are those of mine and who are those of the devil. You're either a child of God or you're the child of the devil. Who are you obeying? Unrighteousness or righteousness? I will never condemn someone, but I will judge those inside the church because Corinthians says, the word of God says, judge those inside the church who profess to be believers, not those who don't profess to believers. Because if you don't profess to be a believer, who am I to judge you? It says the righteous scarcely are saved. Those in the house of God, the judgment starts first at the, at the house of God. Let's continue. But we know that the judgment of God is according to the truth against those who practice such things. And do you think this, oh man, you who judge those practicing such things are doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? So do you think that you're going to escape the judgment of God because you who judge others are doing the same thing? If there's secret iniquity in your life and you're judging someone else for the same thing, but maybe it's been a day without you doing it, but then you go right back into it. Are you thinking that you're going to escape the judgment of God? That's what it's saying. Or do you despise the riches of his goodness and for forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? See, God is so good. We need to understand and see sin for what it is. Sin is death. Sin, the wages of sin is death. You sin, you die. You go to hell. You're separated from the glory of God. But the goodness of God. The blood of the lamb, the love that he's shown by giving his one and only son. He said, my son, my daughter, I love you enough to die for you. I, I paid that penalty. Trust in me. Live for me. I will show you greater and better things more than anything you could ever comprehend. But you decided to live for yourself and had pleasure in unrighteousness and did not receive the love for the truth that you might be saved. But accordance with the hardness in your empty heart, you are treasuring up for yourselves wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. So with your hardened heart and your impotent heart, you are treasuring up for yourselves the wrath of the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Revelation is understanding, is comprehension, is whoa, that's what the righteous judgment of God is. My pastor said all I got to do is say a prayer and that I'm good and set free and that I can live whatever, you know, I'm justified and then I'm sanctified. It's different, this, that, and the other. Listen, if you are justified, you will be sanctified. If you are justified by the blood of the Lamb, you will be sanctified because he who started a good work in your life is faithful to bring it to completion. That is still true to this day. And I have to hold on to the promises of God. It's not enough to believe in God. We have to believe and have faith in the promises of God and continue to walk in that. Who will render to each one according to his deeds eternal life to those by, who by patient continuance in doing good seek for the glory honor and immorality but those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth but obey unrighteousness indignation and wrath tribulation and anguish on every soul of a man who does evil of the jew first and also the greek which is gentile god doesn't have favorites the jewish people are his chosen people but many of them are going to hell because they rejected the lamb of god they were they were may have living righteously by the law but it's not the law that saves you it's the blood of jesus but if you have the blood of jesus you will fulfill the law by the love of god that he's given you 
but glory. For as many as have for as many as have sinned without law will also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law will be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just in the sight of God, but the doers of the law will be justified. For when Gentiles who do not have the law by nature do the things in the law, these, although not having the law, are a law to themselves, who show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness in between themselves, their thoughts accusing or else accusing them or else excusing them in the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. God doesn't have favorites. But I'm so fed up and I'm I'm so fed up with this false teaching. This false teaching of like like I don't care if I'm attacked by what I'm saying. I'm speaking what the Lord Almighty is telling me to speak and I'm not going to hold back because I love God with all of my heart and I love him and I want to obey him. I want to be the closest person I can be to the hands and feet of God at my knees in all humility and all nothing. I'm dust guys. I'm nothing but dust. I never want to be self-righteous because I'm not righteous of myself. I'm righteous by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. But if my testimony has no oomph because it's just I'm still walking in, in the old man and in the old ways. If any man is a new if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. If any man anywhere at any time is in Christ, he is a new creation gone with the old and with the new. Is God a liar? Let man be a liar and God be true. Let every man a liar and God be true. I don't even want you to guys trust in me. Don't believe in the words of Colton. Believe in the word of God. Don't believe in what I'm saying. Test the spirits. If I have the spirit of Antichrist, I want you to test it and forsake and forget what I'm talking about. But if I'm speaking the word of God, and if I have the spirit of the living God inside of me, which I do and I believe, then listen to the word of God. We don't have time left. Quit playing games. Jesus is alive, but I'm going to scream. I'm going to shout. I'm going to declare his glory and his love. Say this prayer with me. I'm, I'm, I'm being led by God to just finish with a prayer. If you want to rededicate your life to the glory of God, if you want to, if you want to walk with God in the spirit and you just don't know how, don't not let the enemy condemn you because if you are breathing right now, you have the chance to be saved and redeemed by the grace of God. You have the chance to be saved, set free and delivered and set apart. For God's purposes, not for your purposes. Because if we are saved, we have works to do for the glory of God. Not because we trust in that, but because we trust in Him. Lord Jesus, I thank you right now, Father, for everybody watching this video. It was a divine appointment to be able to hear the truth, God. And there's going to be many people who reject this. But if there's that one soul, that one sheep, that one person who comes to repentance, godly sorrow brings repentance that leads unto salvation. I pray, God, that one person who truly, truly wants and desires to live for you and wants all truth, not baby sugar-coated gummy bear gospel, but that wants the truth, I pray you will give them their heart's desires and pleasing you. Because because that's what they want God they want to please you they want to live for you because we see that this world is wicked and that they don't know you but we know that you are coming we're gonna declare your coming we're gonna come in unity with the body of Christ and my brothers and sisters right now say this after me say Abba I cry out to you right now I ask you to forgive me of all my sin of all unrighteousness I pray that you fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit to live for you that I may truly know you for myself. Not for what a pastor has told me. Not for what a person or family member has told me. But for what you have said in your holy word. I give my life to you. I ask you to give me a new heart. New desires. New faith. And a measure of wisdom and revelation and love at the end of the day. For all will go away. All gifts, all, all whatever, all works will be swallowed away. But these things will last. Love, faith, and hope. The greatest is love. May I love you, God. May I fall deeply in love with you today, tomorrow, for all of eternity. I thank you, Jesus. I want to get baptized in Jesus' name. I want to be baptized in His Holy Spirit. I receive you. And I know that you will make a way where there seems no way. Even if there's not anybody to baptize me right now, God, I pray you baptize me with your Holy Spirit. I receive you right now. 
In Jesus' name, amen. I want, I want to encourage my brothers and sisters to be a people of faith. Be a people of faith. Be a people of faith in our Lord and Savior. Because listen, He split the sea. That's the same God we serve. He will split the sea when there seems like there's no way to the other side. God will make a way. Believe in Him. He's coming back. We don't have a lot of time. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. I love you, but most of all, it doesn't matter what I love. It's that Jesus loves you. Amen.